Hey, what's going on guys? Kitsune TCG here, back with another deck profile. And today we're looking at another deck here, post-August 2024 ban list. And that is going to be Tempai Dragon. Now, obviously, Tempai did suffer a few hits. One uh, direct in Sang and Summoning going to one, and one indirect in Pot of Prosperity going to one. Uh, Pot of Prosperity going to one is pretty huge for a lot of decks, but especially for this deck as... You, know, you were using it to search out any number of going second cards and just really obviously added a little bit of consistency um, to just kind of make a going second strategy a lot more viable. Uh, this deck is still going to definitely be competitive. You know, it will be the second best, if not, you know, third best deck in the format. I think everybody kind of agrees you bell looks like it is going to be the best deck. Uh, and then losing two copies of Sang and Summoning was also unfortunate for the deck. You know, pretty often you were seeing it in your starting hand, and you were virtually immune to most hand traps um, from the get-go. Now, with only one copy plus terraforming, uh, you are going to definitely be susceptible to, you know, Ash, Imperm, things like that on your Pydra uh, before you have a chance to establish the field spell. So it is a little bit unfortunate, but um, you obviously still have a lot of ways to get access to the field spell and, you know, your combo is pretty safe. Uh, I guess the one benefit is this deck can put up 8k damage pretty regularly, even without the field spell. So, you know, now since you're not seeing Pot of Prosperity as much, you're not having to do 16k damage as much as well. So, you know, definitely some, I guess, you know, a little bit of, a bit of trade-off there. So the deck is still pretty viable. You can still pretty regularly do um, 8k damage, you know, We've got a lot of ways to kind of clear our opponent's board here, but I thought I'd just kind of quickly go over what the deck list looks like, and then kind of go from there. But yeah, so we're still maxing out on three Pydra, three Chundra. Obviously, you want to see these in your opening hand if you can, uh, and, you know, if not, you have a lot of ways to kind of search them out, but definitely maxing out on three there. I've seen a lot of people, you know, I'm obviously, you know, one, two, Fadra has kind of been the um the choice never obviously really needing three but i'm still kind of going with two fadra especially since runic didn't suffer any hits on this ban list and i think um, runic white woods will become a pretty popular deck you definitely don't want to lose um you know your only copy of fadra so i think playing two is still pretty important you definitely want to have access to at least a copy of fadra uh from there you know Genroku, I think two copies is still fine. Um, obviously, you can still search it off of the field spell. You can still search it off of Kaiman. You can search it off of Dora Drago. So, you know, a lot of different ways that you can kind of get this to your hand. Um, even Magnemite is an option. So I think two is still perfectly fine to play. I guess you can maybe cut it down to one if you absolutely want. But I think two is just fine. Uh, the one Dora Drago. The one Magnemite. The one Sing and Summoning. And the one terraforming. Um, obviously, we are still maxing out on Kaiman. This is obviously a really important card to the combo to be able to kind of hit that um, 8k and get those number of monsters on board. Uh, Shifter, you know, surprisingly, unsurprisingly, however you want to view it, was not hit on the ban list. So we are still maxing out three in the main deck. Um, this deck can obviously play through this card quite easily, and you know, especially with all the other kind of going second, you know, board breakers that we're playing, you're pretty often able to kind of hit into a pretty clear board with um, Shifter. And then, you know, obviously Sagan Summoning does still trigger when it's destroyed, but it's banished, so, you know, you're not really worried too much there. Uh, three Ash, three Droplet. Um, obviously, it doesn't play as well with Dimension Shifter, so it just kind of depends on what your opening hand looks like. Um, three Raigeki. Two Thrust, which is, again, another way that you can um, get access to the Field Spell or, you know, maybe Pot of Prosperity or just whatever you need access to in the moment. With the two Lightning Storm, one Duster, one Pot of Prosperity, uh, and then a few other kind of targets as well for the thrust. We've got the ta one talents and then the one change of art. So you definitely have a lot of ways to clear your opponent's board, you know, kind of get as many monsters off there as possible to just kind of make sure you're still hitting in for um, a lot of damage. And then just finishing it off with three imperm. 
So, you know, obviously 40 card list deck will be pretty consistent. You know, you'll pretty often be able to kind of push through any board your opponent can make, um, especially since we know we did lose things like Appaloosa and just a few kind of like, um, you know, we lost a lot of, ob um, you know, Omni Gates recently. So I think, you know, this deck is actually in a pretty good place. And I think most going second decks are in a pretty decent place right now. Uh, moving on to the extra deck, um, still playing two Bident Dragons. I think, um, you know, definitely requires two, you know, maybe you could argue a second of the level 10 is necessary, because I think you'll see a little bit more, um, you know, um, Cash Tira as uh, people are kind of playing around a little bit with the Dragon Rulers, but I still think, you know, Two on Biden is a must, and, you know, maybe two on um, Transcendent Dragon, depending on, like, your locals, if uh, Cash Deer is pretty popular. Uh, but then we have the one Black Rose, the one Ancient Fairy, uh, the one Meteor Burst Dragon, obviously, for the Mirror, the Salmon Ride Destroyer for the U-Belt matchup, the Transcendent Dragon and Trident Dragon. Uh, from there, I still have a pretty heavy Link package, you know, I still think it's pretty nice to play, especially as this deck I think maybe gets a little bit more popular again. You can maybe be, maybe see um, Dimension Barrier kind of pop up some more, so I think the links will kind of come back into play. I've got the One Striker Dragon, um, obviously just a kind of generic way for you to trigger SP Little Knight. The Spears, if you are made to go first, uh, SP Little Knight, Hita, uh, Princess... And then we have the Raging Phoenix and Zelantis there for that Link OTK. But yeah, all in all, I think the deck is still very viable. Um, I'm definitely excited to kind of get play this deck a little bit in this format. Um, as we kind of move into Rage of the Abyss, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of changes the format as we get a little bit of water decks. But definitely think that this is still a very strong and very viable deck. And yeah, let me know down below what y'all think, and I will see y'all next time.